Yes, we're here. Another edition. This one's got a little Nets flavor. Iron Eagle, Sarah Kustak. Kus! Hey! <laughs> you already have me in tears for the viewers. <laughs> um, we've been trying to get this coordinated, and I'm already in tears because Iron Eagle, you make me laugh harder than any person on the planet. So It's like a, a <laughs> Nets production meeting, basically, which we normally have at 515 day of the game. And I must say... I miss those. I miss that time together. That, that's usually a great time for our group to bond, get ready for the game. We talk about the game a little bit, but mostly we just make each other crack up. When people have asked me, because of course we all are family, friends, everyone are like, oh, you miss this, what do you miss this, what do you miss most about your job? The bus rides sitting next to you and the production <laughs> I think might be at the top, of course, the games, of course, the calls. Um, those two might be at the top of the list. I don't know if you noticed, but I have no facial hair. I tried. I tried for 17 days, and I actually grew a beard. I've had the same look basically for 30 years. This was a huge departure. I'm not going to do it, Bird, because I love you and your family. But there was parts of me that wanted to pull out. Of course, we have our <laughs> and yes, uh, group text chain email. The pictures of you are priceless. <laughs> I want at some point, because of course, those who watch us on Twitter or follow us on Twitter and Instagram, that's on yes, the truck, all of us, yep. every begs, begs for you to have an account. I think one day, when things get really deep in the thick of this, maybe you just have an account and you start putting out the pictures of you. Yeah. Well, we, we thought it might be the beard and the braids for this particular Yes, We're Here session, because you had the braids going. I've had the braids going every day. I had a phone call with our great producer, Frank DeGrace, who suggested to me when we do this that I don't use the braids. <laughs> 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 braids out. <laughs> He's the boss, so I listened to him. However, I felt like if you had the beard, I was like, well, Bird has wow. the beard. And then when you shave the beard, it, it changed. Yeah, what, what I realized, I realized a few things. A, on that final day that I had it, when I tried to fall asleep, it felt like I was sleeping with a chinchilla on my pillow. So at that point, I said, I may have to make an adjustment here. The second thing also is... Here are a few things that happens in everyday life, as we know, Sarah. When you get a haircut, everybody always seems to mention it. It's the first time, like, did you get a haircut? You're like, yeah, yeah, I got a haircut. <laughs> Second thing, if you get new sneakers, I always find that people say, well, are those new sneakers? I'm like, yeah, they're new sneakers, okay? It, it's fine. And the fact that I appeared on some of these segments with a beard, I got a torrent of texts not just indicating that they saw me with the beard, but giving their opinion on the beard. And it was not favorable. A lot of texts saying, hey, saw you with the beard. It's not really working for you. Who are these people? <laughs> Wait, I love the beard. You know, I, Sorry. I was very Sorry. into the beard. Majority what, rules. More importantly, your incredible wife, Elisa. What did Elisa think of the beard? Elisa was one of the texts, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> From the other room? From the other room, like, hey, you may want to lose the beard. Had you ever had a beard before? No, not honestly, not to that level. Uh, I had never allowed it to go 17 days without shaving. And little did I know that my beard would come in as Al Raboski, the mad Hungarian. <laughs> former major league pitcher. That was the issue. You don't know how the beard is going to form until it actually forms. So uh, I did, as you noticed on our uh, Yes Network chain, text chain, I did <laughs> shave it down to the point where it was a handlebar mustache. Oh, I noticed. I, <laughs> I noticed. Do you want, I, do you want to I, show the picture? I'm okay. If you want to show the picture, I'll, I'll live with it. Or I could show it. I delete all text messages. Once okay. I one, oh, really? That, we should probably delve into that. That's a very interesting thing. <laughs> I didn't know that about you. All text messages deleted as I if they never happened. Until once I respond back, 
to you, and we've had our exchange oh, over, and nice. I, then I just delete it. Well, but I will save pictures. If I've ever asked you a question on text that you're like, girl, I just didn't I just <laughs> like scroll back up, probably because I've deleted it. So I'm sure like you, I have jumped into the rabbit hole of many different things, mostly NBA related, where I'll just start watching endless highlights of players randomly with no real rhyme or reason. I'll get into a 20 minute Sam Cassell session and then I'll go 15 minutes with Mirza Toledovic. Oh. And then I'll watch Robert Ori game winners. I'm just bouncing around from player to player. Are you on YouTube? Are you in your, see what, what I've been doing, which yeah. I was doing earlier, game two of the finals, the Heat and yeah. um, on NBA TV. I feel like it's a, for as much as we miss calling games, we miss this season, um, you miss the uncertainty of knowing the beauty yeah. of don't know the outcome. Um, some of these classic games and whether it's, you know, going back, the other day, they were they were running through all those incredible Lakers Celtics series, but it's really there's there's been a really special um, feel for me throughout this time that we don't have sports uh, to look back and see some of those games, see some of those people just sit down and buckle in and see so many of the games that we talk about um, once again. What has struck you about style of play? Because you don't even have to go that far back to notice how drastically things have changed in the NBA. Last few years compared to 2014, 2015, obviously going back to Celtics, Lakers, going back to the great Bulls teams. It's a stark difference in just the philosophy of how to approach the game. It is unreal, Bert, and I think we forget that. And for as much as we've talked about how the game has changed because of rule changes and foul and defense, um, you see so much of that. It was either Mark Jackson or Jeff Van Gundy was talking about the heat in the first half and a, a factor of how they played. We said, oh, my goodness, they, they already have taken nine threes in the first half. <laughs> just the amount. Like, what? Um, but just everything about the style or even looking at, you know, we talk so much. I know there's so much fun on the physicality of play or just yeah. how approach um and it's 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 so different and you can understand as we hear from so many players and those who played in the past are just talking about their games or what they remember as players why it's just such a, a different feel and it's i think that's been you know why people love sports why people love sure. the game style has changed because i think it will continue to evolve continue to change um but but that's to your point that's been one of the most fun things to watch because it's like wow this really um, has evolved in such a way that how you game plan, how you strategize, what the coaches are doing. Rick Carlisle's hair looked. <laughs> very, yeah, that, that's very evolved. All of, our, all of our hair, but the the, the things um, the, the things that we appreciate about the game, I think, it's just fun to look at the differences. You know, the other rabbit hole that I fell down. Yeah, I want to hear about the rabbit holes that are maybe non NBA related. Well. Let me finish with the NBA related because it pertains to a topic near and dear to our heart and our work. And that's watching Kevin Durant highlights throughout his career and Kyrie Irving highlights throughout his career, not just with the Nets this year, where he packed in a season's worth of highlights into 20 games. Just some of those calls this year from a play by play man's perspective were so much fun and exciting because of his style of play and the fact of the matter is you can barely look down at your notes when Kyrie had the ball in his hands because there was a pretty good chance he was going to do something that you may have never seen before so you watch a boatload of Durant and Irving and it just gets you thinking about the future and how their games may complement one another in Nets uniforms down the road it's it's extraordinary Ian and with both of those players. I think um, in talking about Kyrie Irving, I've, I've been trying to do my best to stay off social media a bunch, just kind of check out, um, look yeah. at the P2. And I can't, I can't remember what it was to credit it, but there was a highlight reel of talking about Kyrie Irving and his handles. Um, it was I saw it. 
Yeah, it, and it was extraordinary because as we had the opportunity, to your point, seeing it in live living color, it's, it's unbelievable. But when you understand the nuances and what he can do, the talents yeah. of just hours he's poured into that and then on the flip side of things Kevin Durant um you never forget how seemingly unstoppable he yep. is um but throughout the course of the day-to-day -day, when someone is injured and they're not on the court you don't see them every day and we you know we're studying our film we're seeing different teams um it does move to the back of your mind and um his shot his scoring ability his understanding of the game uh, it is for Brooklyn Nets fans during this time. I know everyone's anxious about so many different things, but the way the pieces have the ability to fall together, the core of the group that they have now, um, there is a lot to be excited about in the future. Let me give you one net story if we're going to do uh, I want to a net centric that. conversation you know, for the true blue Nets fan because uh, we've seen some of these past games being featured. Nets and Lakers met in the finals in 2002. And I was out in LA with, at the time, Bill Raftery. Frank DeGrace, our Nets producer, was out there as well. And Todd McCullough, the Nets center, great guy, a terrific human being, and, and had a nice NBA career. He ends up going to dinner with us the night before game one of the NBA finals. We had a large group. Todd McCullough came with us, which is not necessarily something you see every day, a player uh, coming out to dinner with the TV crew. And he brings his dad with him as well to the dinner. We would go to an Italian restaurant in Los Angeles. So, you know, Sarah, I really pride myself on pronunciations. I'll phonetically put the <laughs> syllables down on my board to make sure I'm saying it correctly. I never want to offend anybody. So we sit down for dinner. And Todd McCullough's dad, Todd's from Canada, his dad's a big Canadian man, very nice man. He says to me, he says, hey, uh, Ian, I got, I got a bone to pick with you. I said, really? He said, you've been butchering our name the whole year. I said, what? No, McCullough, Todd McCullough. He said, no, no, it's McCulloch. I said, I'm so sorry. I actually asked Todd before the season, how do you pronounce your last name? And he said, McCullough. And then his dad said, well, he doesn't know. <laughs> so. So, wait, so what did he do? I always feel like that's the, uh, the big conundrum is, is when the rest of the, the entire NBA world knows the yeah. player's name. And then a player, the player's father, tells you the correct way. So if you use that, the yeah. regular viewer thinks, well, gosh, I mean, he doesn't know how to pronounce <laughs> Todd McCulloch's name? What is it? I stuck with McCullough. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't make the change. It was too hard, too difficult. Sarah, as we know, this is a really important time for everybody to stay safe, to maintain social distancing as well. This is not the time to pull back. This is the time to stay vigilant as we all try to do our part in putting this in the past and, and moving forward and getting back to some form of normality. Yeah, and we know the biggest and best way that we can help and what we can do is we're all a team, we're all in this together, is if you can stay home, stay home and stay I think about those on the front lines who we have so much gratitude for um, trying to keep us safe and healthy. Um, so it's the least that we can do. Um, be together. And we have an opportunity to still stay connected. We do. We do. And it's funny. Every time the video comes up, it's always like a surprise. It's like, oh, hi. Hey. Hi. <laughs> it's cool. Is, is everyone FaceTiming you now? Everyone? Everybody is FaceTiming me. You name it. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, yeah, it's been nice. It's been good to, to hang with, with the family. Not my family, but just some random family <laughs> in town. <laughs> oh, Bernie, I miss you. Miss this was cool, Coos. We'll do it again, all right? <laughs> yes, we will.